WCIA 3 News. A final goodbye for a fallen officer as hundreds bid farewell to Champaign police officer Chris Oberheim. While people paid their respects, the grief remains how experts are helping people heal at this point. And the FBI says violence against police is on the rise nationwide and authorities want to know why. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Well, Champaign police honoring Officer Chris Oberheim this Wednesday, exactly a week after he was shot and killed responding to a domestic disturbance. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm McLeod Hegeman. Jessica has the night off. Well, much of central Illinois turned out to pay their final respects to fallen police officer Chris Oberheim. His death sent shockwaves through central Illinois and police departments across the nation as well. Today's service was truly remarkable with people near and far paying their final respects. Take a look at this. Christopher O'Brien, 703 is 1042. Dear Blue, Red, and Gold families, thank you for your 20 years of selfless service to the Champaign and Decatur communities behind the badge and the Monticello community on the field. Officer O'Brien, you gave the ultimate sacrifice. May you rest in eternal peace. You will forever be remembered as a dedicated and decorated true American hero. You answered the call and gave us your all. Champaign police make one final call for 44-year-old officer Chris Oberheim a week after he was shot and killed responding to a domestic violence call. Your brothers and sisters have it from here. And to watch May 19th, 2021. His hometown hero laid to rest in Monticello following his funeral service in Decatur. People near and far turned out showing their respect. It means the world to me. It's been so neat this last week seeing all the support for our police officers. There have been some um, noisy voices in the last year, but I think they're a minority, and I think we love our police officers, and we need them, and we're thankful for them. For family and wives of law enforcement, this loss was particularly personal. The past week's been pretty emotional for a lot of the spouses. Um, we feel for his spouse. We can never imagine what she's going through. Um, but it's been emotional just to know that it's hit this close to home for us. And a GoFundMe account has been set up to help Chris Oberheim's family, including his wife and four daughters. At last check, more than $173,000 has been donated for that cause. If you'd like to show your support, you can visit our website at WCIA.com. An officer Oberheim started his career with the Decatur Police Department in 2000. He then transferred to Champaign in 2008, where he received two Medals of Valor for his courageous acts of selfless bravery. And as people mourn this tragic loss, experts remind these communities it'll take time and support to get through this. WCI 3's Bryce Bement joins us now to explain what resources are available. Now, Bryce, the University of Illinois Police Department had service dogs at the visitation yesterday. How are they helping? UIPD have multiple therapy dogs. They say the dogs are helpful to support others, but it's also helpful for the officers. Grief is unique to each individual and there's no right way or wrong way to grieve. People from communities all around Central Illinois are dealing with loss. Grief and losing someone that we love is probably the worst experience and worst feelings that we're going to have and throughout our lifetime. Champaign police officer Chris Oberheim has been laid to rest and people from all over the country came to say their final goodbyes. Grief is not something that we get over that it's something that we learn to live with and that they're not alone. Kristen Hamill, a psychotherapist from OSF, says everyone deals with grief differently. It's not a linear process and it doesn't fit into neat little boxes and that we can go from feeling like we're moving forward and then have something trigger us. She says to be aware of how your loved ones are doing and that there are signs to be on the lookout if your friend or family member is having a hard time. Those include isolation, irritability, loss of interest in activities they used to enjoy, and more. But Hamill says there are ways you can help. Sitting next to them, telling them, I'm here for you, I love you, and I can listen to you. And as communities across central Illinois mourn the loss of a father, a coworker, friend, and more, Hamill says sometimes it helps to continue to come together to support one another. 
people can create their own support groups and that can provide empowerment to and get a community together to work through their grief. Champaign Police Department said they are making sure they have resources available for staff and families and officers affected. Back to you. All right, Bryce, thank you so much. Officer Oberheim wasn't the only officer shot last Wednesday. His partner, Jeffrey Creel, was hit three times while responding to that domestic violence call. He's now recovering at home. Police say 24-year-old Darian Lafayette shot at both of them. He died at the scene. Illinois State Police confirmed that Lafayette had never had a FOID card, and his past felony convictions would have kept him from legally owning a gun. And experts say domestic violence calls are often more dangerous than the most incidents police are sent to because of how unpredictable they can be. Four police officers have been killed nationwide this year while responding to domestic violence calls. Illinois has laws on the books that can actually keep people of convicted felons from legally having guns. They also have red flag laws allowing victims to ask a judge to take away an accused abuser's guns. And violence against police is on the rise nationwide. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell took a closer look at the numbers and talked with law enforcement to find out why. One year from this month, Officer Chris Oberheim's name will be etched in stone at this Illinois Police Memorial, along with all the other officers in Illinois killed in the line of duty. And that number, the FBI tells us, is on the rise nationwide. Frankly, I'm sick of being on the defensive. Ed Wojcicki heads up the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police. People seem to feel more emboldened to uh, pride the officers, uh, in, some, in some cases physically harm them. He says officers statewide are reporting an increase in violence directed at them. Last year, there were 79 officers shot at or shot. David Brown leads the state's largest police force in Chicago. The superintendent noted the alarming trend after an officer was shot in March. So far this year, we are on a even greater pace than last year with 13 officers uh, shot at or shot. Nationwide, FBI crime statistics show 31 officers killed in felony attacks so far this year, a 55% surge over 2020. It just highlights the dangers of policing in the current environment we in. The people who are getting the most attention right now are the people who have something bad to say about the police. He hopes these tragedies will serve as a wake-up call to society. People will come to their senses and realize that while all this is going on, the police are out there protecting them day in and day out. Police officers searching for answers point to a number of possible reasons why to explain this increase in attacks on officers. Of course, many are, are sensitive to the public mood and sentiment as it shifts in the aftermath of viral videos showing the police use of force, that altering public's perception. But a more dangerous reality is already front of mind for many officers, that coming out of a pandemic, as gun violence and domestic violence are also on the rise, answering those calls alone puts officers at a greater risk of being in harm's way. Reporting in Springfield, Mark Maxwell. And for more details on our coverage of Officer Chris Oberheim, you can visit our website at WCIA.com. In other news, a murder trial is close to wrapping up in Effingham County. Closing arguments are expected tomorrow in the trial of Christopher Glass. He's accused of killing 29-year-old Kimberly Mattingly. Her body was found more than a year ago in rural Beecher City. Aaron Kaiser was found guilty of concealment last fall. He was sentenced to eight years in prison. Well, more charges were filed this week against a man accused of robbing Harvest Market in Champaign about a week ago. 55-year-old Terry Dealey is also accused of using a butcher knife to rob two people at the same day on the 15th. Now, court documents say he also robbed another person on May 19th. New tonight at 10, a former Ford County inmate claims he was denied medication for diabetes. He's now suing the sheriff's office. David Horn's attorney filed a lawsuit last week seeking $50,000 from the sheriff's office for violating his civil rights and inflicting emotional distress. He claims he was denied access to his medicine when asked, and he later suffered a stroke at the jail. To learn more about this story, you can visit our website at WCIA.com. Well, if you haven't been vaccinated and you're worried about hitting the road this weekend, don't worry. Plus, it's a problem that's interrupting Coach Underwood's golf game, why he hasn't had much time to relax. And Kevin, pretty nice weather today, but things, well, they're changing. Yeah, tomorrow could be a little stormy around here, so yeah. definitely need to be paying attention to the weather tomorrow. You know, it's been kind of nice lately. I haven't had to worry about a whole lot, but tomorrow could get a little dicey. All right, let's take a look at the recap for today.
tonight's our almanac here as we over the 